everyone welcome back to the channel or welcome here if you've never been here before my name is grace and today i'm going to talk about how i healed my eczema so if you've been following this channel since the beginning which was officially two years ago that i started you may have noticed my skin having some ups and downs throughout the journey of me being on youtube and i would say probably in the past couple of years my eczema has been the worst it's ever been in my life i've had eczema my entire life so even as a baby i was one of those babies that had like baby acne and then after that I just had eczema, I had rashes, I had hives, I had really 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 sensitive skin my whole life. My mom used to have to put me in oatmeal baths and all that stuff. I lived in California growing up so because of the heat sometimes I would just get like extra eczema in places where I would sweat so like in the folds of my arms and legs and like near my armpits and stuff but in general it was not horrible growing up. It started getting really, really, really bad in college though. So when I moved from California to New York to come here for college, I became vegan and I also started, you know, because it was college, started binge drinking on the weekends, which this combination for me personally was really, really not great. I went through a lot of different phases thinking it was polyester, thinking that it was gluten, thinking that it was like all these other random types of things. And it would usually just flare up really bad during the winter months, sometimes extra bad during the summer months. It was kind of just like up and down. I didn't really know exactly 100% what caused it. And this past November, or I guess the December before this past one that we just had, the December of 2022, it was the worst it's ever been in my entire life. I didn't realize that I was having contact dermatitis and eczema or atopic dermatitis at the same time and it was literally covering my entire body I was in so much pain I had to call out of work a couple of times it was just it was really 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 awful I knew that I had to do something about it and I wasn't exactly sure what it is that I should do but I knew that it was basically a last-ditch effort to see what I could do before I got on Dupixent because it was so bad. I had two separate dermatologists tell me that it was a really, really, really severe case of eczema and that no matter what I did, there wasn't anything that was going to get rid of it. So I had to just go on the medication and that was the only option. But I tried changing my diet, kind of completely rearranging everything from the inside out and it worked and it has worked. I've been eczema free essentially for almost a complete year now and it's insane. <laughs> so let me tell you how I did it. So with my little backstory wrapped up, I just want to give one disclaimer before I get into the rest of the advice in this video. The whole thing about healing your eczema, there's going to be a lot of people on YouTube and other places on social media that are telling you, this is the one thing that you should do to heal your eczema, or this product is the holy grail, or doing this and you will 100% solve your eczema. It's all snake oil. I don't care what they're saying, if someone is offering you a one trick fixes all for eczema, it's not real. 100% do not trust them. The thing about eczema that I learned is that every single person is different and there is no one size fits all answer to solve your eczema. So if someone tells you that, they're lying to you. I'm just gonna be really honest with you guys because I have wasted so much money on different creams, different whatever, supplements, all these things. So I'm gonna tell you what personally worked for me and I'm going to give you some tips and advice on how to figure it out for yourself. I'm telling you it's going to be a process, it's going to be an experiment, it's going to be a lot of trial and error, it's going to be uncomfortable, it's going to suck, I cried a lot, it was horrible at first, but it got so much better as time went on and it's gonna work out. You just have to be really patient and try things before you find something that works for you. So when I tell you what works for me, it's not gonna be the same thing that works for everyone. I just wanna tell you my experience and what I think would be helpful for other people that wanna go through the same journey of trying to get rid of their eczema. So with that disclaimer out of the way, I will get into how I personally healed my own eczema. So the first thing that I did obviously was visit a dermatologist and I've seen dermatologists for years and years and years 
Anyways, and they told me that no matter what I ate, no matter what I did with my diet, it was not gonna fix my eczema. And I started to feel really hopeless, I'm not gonna lie, because I had heard from many doctors, many dermatologists, that I had chronic severe eczema. But I wanted to try one more thing before they started injecting me with Dupixent. So we got some patch testing done, and when I tell you, it was so worth it. Oh my gosh. Patch testing and allergy testing are kind of similar, but kind of not the same thing at the same time. So eczema can definitely be allergen related and you can sometimes just get like more topical, you know, irritation from stuff which causes eczema, which I think for me, certain topical things were exacerbating my eczema, but it was definitely all coming from like inside. Anyways, I ended up getting over 150 different allergens <laughs> tested on my back. It was literally covering my entire back and I found out after all that testing that I was allergic to alkyl glucosides and every time that I touched or used a product with alkyl glucosides I got a contact dermatitis rash and it was a rash that could last up to eight weeks just from one time of contacting the alkyl glucosides so really not great. The reason that I highly 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 recommend getting patch testing even if you literally have to pay for the whole thing out of pocket which I almost basically did because I was having a huge fight with my insurance at the time. Long story short, I was on my mom's insurance and it was kind of localized to like the area that I'm from, which is the area in California. And of course I live in New York and I was getting all my testing done in New York. Anyways, the insurance was like not having a good time. They weren't really gonna cover it. So we ended up having to pay for a lot of it out of pocket, but I would pay for it over and over and over again to find out the information that I did. And I regret not doing it sooner because the amount of money that I have wasted on products that I didn't know what I was allergic to. Apparently, alkyl glucosides are super common in sensitive skin products. So all of the sensitive skin, like eczema products that I was getting, half of them had alkyl glucosides in them and I was still getting rashes. I was still having like burning sensations when I was putting them on. It wasn't helping, it was just hurting. So in general, I would say if you have really sensitive skin or eczema, I would just kind of stay away from sulfates and alcohols and fragrances in general, but you probably already know that. And then for the patch testing, I would a thousand percent make sure that they are patch testing for all kinds of cosmetic ingredients because if you find out one that you are allergic to then you literally know what to look for and what to stay away from when you are going to the drugstore and that has been the biggest game changer for me because the amount of money like I said that I have wasted it's it's ridiculous after I found out I went through all of the things in my bathroom and this was kind of like during my minimalism journey at like the height of it it turned out my body wash <laughs> had alcohol glue besides in it. So that was a really wild thing to find out that the thing that I was literally washing my body with was the thing that was causing me to have so much pain all over my skin. And it was something that I bought when I was on vacation too, when I thought my eczema was gonna get better when I was on vacation. Essentially, I decluttered a ton of stuff. If you wanna watch the video for that, I will link it as well. But that was one thing that I wish that I found out about a lot sooner. The next thing I did was change my diet. So I wanted to heal myself from the inside out because I figured that was the best way to, like Michelle says, get to the root cause of the issue which is usually gut related when it comes to eczema. So on her Instagram, she basically just talks about how each person has a root cause as to what causes their eczema. A lot of the time it could be a candida overgrowth and sometimes it's like leaky gut or like other liver or something. There's also obviously topical steroid withdrawal, which is like a whole other beasts that I don't have any experience on, so I cannot really talk upon it. So if you're going through that, definitely look at her page because she does have some resources on it. But anyways, basically doing some research, looking at her page, I found out that the very likely cause of my eczema, my root cause, was a candida overgrowth in my gut. And that is kind of like an intimidating thing because some of the testing that you can do in doctor's offices isn't always 100% accurate as to the information that you need to know in order to tackle candida and it's also really scary kind of just like going through a cocktail of supplements or whatever so I would definitely say 
talk to a doctor, nutritionist, dietitian, whatever. My stepmom is a dietitian, so I asked her about diet related things throughout the process so that I was staying healthy and making sure that I was eating all the right stuff. But it definitely was not an easy thing in general. This whole process is not easy, especially when it has to do with like food related stuff. So just as like a warning to people that have struggled with eating disordered or any kind of disordered eating in the past, this is going to be the hardest part and you need to have a huge support system in place in order for you to come out on the other side feeling mentally okay. So really, really, really do not take this lightly because it is something that is super serious and I've never had a full blown eating disorder. I feel like in high school my eating was not very healthy and I was working out a lot and I was really, really, really skinny. So this part of the challenge was really hard for me because I feel like nowadays I find a lot of comfort and dopamine in eating food and it was really tough to have it all kind of like stripped away. So having my boyfriend be there for me and really support me and be on the same page as to why I'm doing this was really, really helpful. Having a dietitian in my corner, my stepmom was really helpful as well. And just having that little support team, including all of my other family members that had been in encouraging me to try the diet route the whole time, but I feel like I kind of had to come to that conclusion by myself because it's always really annoying when family members are like, oh, just try this, just try that. You have to figure it out yourself. You have to come to that conclusion and be mentally prepared to go through it because it is really mentally taxing. Anyways, I found out that it was probably candida just based on where my eczema was generally coming up on my body. It was all over my arms, on the inner part of my arms. A lot of the time it was on my eyelids, on my eyes, and I was always craving carbs and sweets. Like I had a really bad sweet tooth and I always just wanted carbs all the time. So those are the really common manifestations of if you have like an over abundance of candida if you have eczema on your eyelids in the creases of your arms whatever and again you kind of are always craving sweets and carbs and stuff like that this is not a diagnostic tool so do more research before you take my word for it but that was what i gleaned from her posts to say that i had that versus like leaky gut or like my liver was not doing so good Long story short, I had to do an elimination diet slash candida diet and it sucked. It sucked really bad. I hated it, it was horrible. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it because I feel like a lot of the times when people are like, yeah, I healed my eczema, I just ate cabbage every day and I like drank celery juice and it was totally fine and la la la, I just gave up sugar and it was all good. No, it was horrible. It was really mentally hard and I was not having a good time. I literally talked about this in my last video that I posted a few days ago, but all of my pantry stuff, like I ended up just because I was dealing with going through all of this like withdrawal of like the foods that I always was eating, I was like trying to find more dopamine in like buying other pantry items and other things of like things that I could eat to like fill in the gaps and like make me feel better. So it was it was just a rough time. So I would say definitely if this is the route that you're going to take, I would honestly highly suggest for anyone who is suffering with eczema to go through an elimination diet and then at the end kind of seeing what things to remove or cut down on in your diet. Again, everything in moderation is fine, but you have to go through a period of like healing yourself before you can start over again, if that makes any sense. And for me, that was like an elimination diet with a candida diet tacked on afterwards in order for me to heal my gut and then reintroduce some of these foods in moderation. And that's kind of like the diet or lifestyle that I'm following through with today. Just so that I could make this video somewhat informative, I guess I can kind of explain the process of an elimination diet. There are like so many infographics about this online, on Pinterest, like all over the place. There's probably a bunch of other YouTube videos that explain this way better than I would, but I will give you like the spark notes version of it, which is basically that you are cutting your diet all the way back down to essentially leafy greens and meat, especially if you think that candida is the, you know, causer of all of this, you basically just have to cut it down to like lettuce and meat essentially because you can't have anything that has like any form of carbs in it. You can't even have rice, like even if it's gluten-free, 
it's like nothing. It was really tough. Then essentially after a certain periods of time, you're allowed to add things back in. And then as you add things back in, you can essentially assess whether or not they give you a reaction. Slowly adding eggs or slowly adding dairy or soy, gluten, whatever. And then in terms of eczema, when you're doing the elimination diet, I feel like the best thing that you can do is keeping a food journal and before you start freaking out, I know. <laughs> if I had to keep a food journal with like all of the foods that I was eating and like all of the whatevers, I would fall so fast down a slippery slope and it would not be good. So I kept an eczema journal. I really can't stress this enough, especially if you have a history of eating disorders or disordered eating, just write down the ingredients. You don't have to write down this amount of calories or whatever. Leave calories out of it. It doesn't even matter. Calories are stupid. They're not important for this at all. When doing this, I would definitely say it would be great to take a probiotic and then maybe one or two other supplements that kind of help detox your body. For me, Personally, I took milk thistle in the morning and at the night. I took probiotic in the morning and I took glycine and magnesium at night as well. So anyways, every day that I was doing the elimination diet slash candida diet because I kind of like ended up combining mine because I had to go all the way like bare bones to the candida diet before adding things back in for me personally because I felt like that would work best. I ended up just writing down all the ingredients of the foods that I was eating. I wasn't doing like any amounts or whatever. Literally, I was just like this is what is in my food. These are the ingredients. I would just list out the ingredients and then I would write if I got itchy from them. Like I would just literally write if I was itchy throughout the day, like at what point, and if that correlated with any of the food that I was eating, I would be able to see all the ingredients that I had eaten, and then if I was itchy later on. And then after a while, I could notice the common denominators of the ingredients that I was eating that would then make me itchy later on in the day. It was also really interesting to be super aware of that because then I would notice how much longer it took after a while. And then I would also notice that like after eating certain foods, I would get rashes in certain places. So like for me, if I've had too much sugar, I will get eczema on my hands. And if I have too much gluten, I'll start getting it on my arms. So it's very interesting now, like knowing that after a bit of experience, this experience just really like connects you super deeply to your body and like what you are going through. Like you really just have to be listening to yourself, listening to your body, taking note of what's going on and how you're feeling. I also would recommend when you're like cleaning, using any kind of chemicals, like excessively washing dishes or stuff, like that you write it down as well. Because I was like, oh, here I emptied out the vacuum cleaner, got kind of itchy, dust and dander, okay, that makes sense and then I had a stressful whatever and then blah 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 because stress is something that also really 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 exacerbates eczema. I would just try to write down as many of the things that are going on in your life as you can and if you're someone that menstruates then definitely keeping track of that as well. It's just kind of like a known fact that if you have eczema, it will flare more or if you have like an active flare, it'll get worse when you're menstruating or like at night your eczema sometimes can flare up as well. So like for me at like 11 p.m. on the dot when I was having like when I had eczema all over the place, like I would literally start getting itchy at 11 and I was like, oh God. So I'd try to be asleep before that so that I wouldn't have to experience it. But anyways, that's pretty much what I did for my eczema journal. So after going through the whole experience of doing the candida diet slash elimination diet, I found out that soy was a huge trigger for me, which was a huge slap in the face honestly so I had been vegan for six years <laughs> prior to doing this you know the elimination diet and I was vegetarian for eight years before that and uh, it made sense that soy was the thing that was triggering me so bad because my eczema was pretty manageable for my whole life and it just started getting really bad in college when I went vegan. So it was not great. It was really unfortunate. And in terms of like my experience during the candida diet, I would say if you are going to go that route, again, 
really make sure that you have a really strong support system. I ended up unfortunately losing a little bit of weight. I felt really weak, really tired, mentally exhausted, physically exhausted all the time. It was really, really intense. I was crying almost every day because I had to eat the same thing over and over and over again. It was super boring. It was literally just like salad the whole time. So I would suggest trying to let out your anger, feel your feelings, write down lists of things that you can eat so you don't feel so overwhelmed by all the things that you can't eat and just know that it'll be over soon. So basically after doing all the food experimentation, I guess, I had to start eating eggs and fish again. And recently I also started eating chicken again, just in small, amounts but it was definitely an adjustment and it still feels kind of weird i wish that i could still be vegan i miss tofu so much and i know that sounds dumb for people that like don't enjoy eating tofu but like not being able to eat like asian food which was something that for me was such a staple for like six years of my life has been really tough to adjust to being unable to go out and eat certain foods or certain types of foods at restaurants because i know that they're all gonna have soy in them is like really really sad. I've been able to switch over to like coconut aminos and that was a huge adjustment for me because it really does not taste the same as soy sauce. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. It's literally totally different. I've been able to, you know, try my best to make things work, but it's it's been, it's been hard. It's been an adjustment, but it's been so worth it for my health to be where it is. And it would not have been possible without the support system that I had. Because honestly, as much as I wish that I had done the elimination diet thing and taken my aunt's advice and like tried to take out certain foods, I was just being stubborn. And I knew that at the time, I didn't have the proper support system that I would have needed in college. Just because I wasn't living with the most supportive and open-minded people that you could ask for. And I honestly don't think I would have been able to do this without my boyfriend like being there every single day cheering me on and reminding me about why I'm doing this and the end result and how much better I'm gonna feel when I'm on the other side of it. So having a support system that is really there for you and cheering you on and rooting for you to get to the end goal, which is healthy body and clear skin and all that stuff. I know it sounds dumb when it's just like clear skin, but like we know how debilitating really severe eczema can be. So all in all, <laughs> I know I feel like this whole video has kind of just been me rambling, but this is just my experience. Now that I know what things I'm allergic to, I know what things to avoid eating. It has been amazing. My life has totally turned around. People comment on how amazing my skin looks <laughs> all the time, remembering how awful it was a year ago. And after healing from the initial candida diet, I have gone back to eating certain things in moderation. So for a long period of time there, for a couple of months at the beginning of last year, I was completely soy free, completely gluten free, completely sugar free, and completely dairy free. And now I am completely soy free and dairy free, but I just have like low sugar and low gluten. So I can still have gluten and sugar in moderation, but if I have too much, my body will just tell me like, girl, you're overdoing it and I'll get eczema. And also I try to, continue on my probiotic and that was something that was very heavily involved in my diet throughout the whole time was probiotic foods like kimchi and sauerkraut and apple cider vinegar shots in the morning with water and actual probiotic tablets as well so all of those things were really helpful for me throughout the whole process and then just kind of knowing that like during my cycle, I just need to eat a bit cleaner. And then in terms of skincare, which I literally haven't talked about this entire video, the simpler, the better. I have talked in a couple of videos before that basically I just use jojoba oil and vitamin E oil on my face and that is literally it. Um, and then SPF when I go outside but that's all. As one of my favorite one of my favorite creators said when she was healing her perioral dermatitis, which kind of manifests really similarly like food-wise, but it's really about healing your gut. So what she said in her video was my food is my skincare. <laughs> and it can be really tough having to adjust to just buying leafy greens for a period of time or 
having more vegetables in your diet or whatever because I know that it can get really expensive but it's one of those things that like you kind of just have to make it happen like get on food stamps if you need to you know try to grow some of it yourself if you have the space or the time or the ability to do that or see if you can get on some type of program for assistance or whatever just see what you can do to make it happen get on like a food subscription service that does fresh vegetables i don't know it's it's one of those things that it's obviously not accessible to everyone and that breaks my heart more than anything else but if you have the ability to do so you just have to to do it your health is so important and your ability to function in the world is something that you should never take for granted especially if you're able to fix it just by adding you know more leafy greens into your diet essentially and healing your gut i had to compromise my morals and my wallet a little bit to make it all happen uh, being a non-vegan person that ends up now spending a lot more money on groceries but it's worth every penny honestly for my health and being able to just kind of live my life as a normal person now just worrying about kind of a couple of things that I can't eat instead of just being constantly in pain bleeding cracking stressed out all the time anyways my camera just died and I just tried to charge it for a second but it looks like it's about to die again I just have a couple more points that I want to get through before the end of this video obviously I'm not a medical professional so I can't give sound medical advice I'm just telling you from my personal experience what I did and that worked for me personally I highly suggest the patch test and the elimination diet in whatever way suits for you I wish that I did the patch test years ago and although the elimination diet was super super mentally and physically draining and taxing and hard it was super worth it to find out what foods were really triggering me my quality of life has drastically improved so painful but worth it <laughs> the biggest piece of advice listen to your body like I said at the beginning of this video if someone is trying to sell you a one size fits all solution to eczema they are bullshitting you and do not listen to them you need to listen to your body you are different from someone else if you do the elimination diet and someone is like, oh, for eczema, you shouldn't be eating blah, 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 and you've done the elimination diet and it doesn't seem to cause a problem for you, go ahead and keep eating it in moderation. Everything in moderation is fine, especially with eczema. If you eat too much of the same thing all the time, I feel like that's what starts causing problems, or at least that's what I've noticed for me personally. It might be different for other people. Focusing on your gut health is like the most important thing that you can do. Everyone's body is different. Everyone's eczema is different. Trust yourself trust your body, and heal your gut. Those are the three main points, okay? I truly wish you the best of luck on your healing journey, and I really hope that this video was helpful to kind of look into my experience, and hopefully you can learn something and apply it to your own experience as well without steroids or medicine that are going to wear down your body and your wallet in the long term. Until the next one, I'm sending you all my love because we're all just trying our best out here.